So to get started on this overall sketch, I'm going to set up my pen the way I need it to be. First thing, I'll go to my color palette and I'm going to be working on the dark areas first on my outline layer. So I want to choose black as my primary color. I'm going to recheck my layers panel to make sure I've got my outline selected. And let's go over and select your pencil. Remember with the pencil, this will give us our best sketching kind of mode. And I'll go up here and I'll choose a pencil that I think works best. For me, I love this graphite pencil. It's got a little bit of texture. I can scale it up and down and uh, it tends to flow really, really nicely. Also by default, it's got a thick and thin pressure sensitive uh, setting to it. And so I can already set that up and work with this. One thing you're going to see me constantly toggle is my smoothing. Keep in mind with smoothing turned on and brought up, this will give you a much crisper, clean line. And sometimes I want that, but sometimes I don't, especially if you've got something within the fur area, those fur, I'm going to want to do real quick, short strokes. And if your, uh, if your pen has too much smoothing, it's going to be very difficult to pick up that fur like texture. However, some areas like around the nose and the eyes where I do want to have a smoother area, that's where I will pick it up and bring in those as well. Now I'm going to start off with just the dark black areas and I like to work around the nose and the eyes and the mouth first. And then I'm going to swap over to white and paint in just a few of the white tufts that are a part of it as well. Let's zoom in on my reference photo so I can see what I'm working with. And so as I look at this drawing, I want to pay close attention to the dark areas and the shape that's here and also pay attention to my rough outline. Since I've worked hard to try to get this as close as possible, this will be kind of the guideline that I can start off with. All right, so jumping in, choose our regular one. Again, we're working on the right layer. I'll zoom in just a little bit. Another thing I don't want you to do is to feel like you have to constantly zoom in for everything that you create. Instead, learn to work a little bit at a distance. Learn to give yourself, train your eye to see the, uh, the entire drawing as a whole. Again, so I've got, I used the smoothing to draw this part out, roundedness of the nose. The nose is kind of pushing outward a bit, so I want to pay attention to keep some lines thin, some lines thicker. But if I wanted to fill that in very quickly, I'm going to bring my smoothing back down to nothing, and then go in and the larger brush. I made my brush slightly larger, and then fill that in quickly. Here's one area that I do want to keep the smoothing lower. As I've got the texture of the fur along the mouth, I kind of want to mimic that in my setup. So I'm using short choppy lines to kind of bring that down. And I can quickly fill that in. Again, use your bracket keys to make it larger or smaller. Right now, I'm just blocking in look and feel of that. Let's see, bring that over. Go back down, make this smaller. 
Now I've got little patches of black that are all in this area. So the next thing that I want to do is I don't necessarily need to draw off every single little contour. Let your eyes do a little bit of the work. So I'm going to, I'll zoom in see if I can show you this. If I was to draw this, draw just a few of the hairs back out, but keep it choppy. I'm also paying attention to the direction that the hairs are moving. So these are starting to move outward this way, then down, then outward this way. So as I draw them, I want my lines to go in that same directional flow with it. They're more to more denser here at the middle, so that needs to get darker. And then they'll get fewer as it moves out. My eye will do all the blending, and we'll go with with that. Again, I can go back up here and start to fiddle around with the texture a bit. That looks good. And I can always go back in and add more texture later. Don't think you have to get every single detail right now. Right now we're just roughing in the lights and the darks. Let's zoom back out on my reference photo. Let's see what we can see with this one. Mouth goes around on this way up to the eye. Another thing that you may want to get into a habit of doing, it's very tempting to draw off the edge of the mouth to do something like this. But when I look at my reference photo, there is no black line that's all the way over there. Instead, I just kind of want to give an indication that there's an edge here. The, the whiteness of the fur that's behind there and the, the two tonal transitions is really what I want to work on. So I'm going to get rid of this. Instead, I'm going to do kind of a choppy line. It'll give me this kind of indication. My, my pencil is very thin, and it's a broken line, but just an indication of a direction. See how that's broken up? Your eye will still complete that in, but without the need of having to draw a solid line throughout the entire thing. Now I can go back in and start to add a little line work. This is where I want to bring smoothing up just a bit. The best part about drawing animals with fur is the fur tends to be very forgiving. It's not a skin tone as long as you've got the basic direction that it's going, you get a little bit of play. And that's why I wanted to give you an animal as one of the first of your drawings. Even these tiger marks, these little stripes that he has, they don't have to be 100% accurate. Matter of fact, I don't want them to be 100% accurate. That's one way I can tell that you're developing more of an artistic eye is when I can see little deviations in the, in the drawing, in the structure. Again, broken line as that comes around. More work that. Same way on the other side. Let's go over to here. <clears throat> Again, I don't see a solid line on this side, but I can indicate where that edge might be by doing a broken line. Now notice I'm not drawing on every single whisker that's coming off of it. We're going to save that part to when I start working with the highlights, when I start working with a light colored pencil. Choppy line. So maybe we'll go all the way through. Now, in all honesty, whenever you do drawings and sketchings like this, most people are never going to see your original, original image. So nobody's going to sit here and compare whether it's 100% spot on. You'll know. So you can feel free to kind of riff on this and create your own little markings, your own little set up. <clears throat> I 
Uh, see, it does get a little bit darker down in this area, so this is maybe where I'll start to pull in a little bit more darkening areas with that. That looks good. Again, choppy lines all the way up to there. And I can even see on the top of his nose, on the bridge of his nose, there's kind of a slight indication. that edge. Hatch in that part right there. If you do make a mistake, feel free to use your eraser tool. Go back in and clean it up. Let's back out. Okay, so now that I got the muzzle relatively done, just on the dark areas, just on the black, Let's focus in on this eye up here at the top. Again, I'm looking at the darkest areas just around the eye, get the good contour of it. We'll zoom in on mine just a bit. But I don't want to zoom in so much and get every single little line. Make this guy bigger. There we go. Pay close attention to your highlights. See, there's a small little highlight there. Little highlights. You can always go back in and add that later. Or we can hit it right now, make sure we don't forget about it. Let's do that. Get the darker the pupil. Maybe a little bit bigger. Now keep in mind, the eye is rounded, it's also glassy, and so there's a lot more interplay of light that goes inside of it. Right now I feel like it is a little bit of a flat eye. I bet once we start placing some of the tones inside of it, that'll really make it pop out. So I'm not too worried that that looks too flat at this point. Another common problem that comes up is if you can't follow your cursor, here's a tip. Use the tab, excuse me, the caps lock key. Caps lock will turn your cursor into a little crosshair, and you can see that crosshair much easier. And then you can kind of pick up on where, where your cursor is if you lose it. I'll go back and add a few directional lines again. The lines on the fur need to match the direction that the fur is going. While we're over here, let's go ahead and just kind of give a indication of this edge. Make my brush a little bigger, go faster. <clears throat> you can see how hatching the lines, especially with a thicker brush over and over again will create the illusion of both fur and darker areas. So if I needed that to be in there, I can pull it in one direction. And I can go over to the other side and do the same thing. So we'll do fur off into this direction. As it moves up into this area, 
becomes more of a broken line. On up into there. Let's grab the other eye. So with this one, again, just the dark contours that are going around the top of the eye. The eyebrow is poking outward, kind of curls around, so I want to make sure to indicate that three-dimensional structure. There we go. Then back around. in the pupil. Pupil on the eye is usually the darkest dark, simply because there's no light that's penetrating inside of the iris, inside of the eye area. Again, this eye looks a little, <laughs> a little wonky simply because there's no highlights to it. Those are coming. And it's okay if it looks sketchy. This guy's got a little extra bit that goes underneath here like that. Since there is a bit of a shadow that falls down on this side of his, his muzzle, I'll kind of indicate that with some hatch lines working this way. There we go. Let's back out our original. Uh-oh. Make sure we got the right tool. There we go. Same way on this one. I've got some a little bit of shadow work going on. So I'm going to use my black tool, hatch in some of the fur, the direction the fur is going. But we're going to do that along the side of his muzzle. Later on we can go back in with a definite tone and shear that up. I like the look of that. Alright, let's go back down to his mouth. I want to indicate some of the fur that's down here. With this, as I did before, I don't want to draw off every single little line work of his fur. Instead, I'm going to look at the shadow edge of this and try to draw off the shape of the shadows. So every once in a while, maybe I'll pull one down. <clears throat> so I'm going the direction and I'm breaking up my line. So notice that every once in a while I'll jump or I'll skip an area. That simply gives me room to see where all of the lighter colors are. Maybe a shorter cluster here. Jump. zoom out, look at the thing as a whole. Yeah, so far so good. Can always go back in maybe later. Let's get a bigger brush and do some of these darker ones down with this one. And let's play around with the rest of his head. I'll back out. I'll look at this side of his face. And I'm specifically looking at the ear now. Now with the ear, got a darker areas up here and then gets a little lighter tufts. So maybe if I come up here Let's indicate that. So I've got one central dark point kind of moving outward from. Bunch of little tufts that are going along this edge. 
Again, broken line. I'm not drawing off. This is one solid line. Since it's furry, I'm breaking up the line, giving myself just an indication, letting my eye pull all of that together. And that gives the illusion of fur. Let's go back down to this particular part. I like this. I need this to be a little bit larger. Now this outer edge is mostly white fur, so I'm just going to do just a few, just a few, just a few indications with my black pen where that edge may be, a few shadows, and also the direction that it's moving. Move down into this area. So all of that is mostly white, but there are a few shadows on this side. Notice I'm not tackling every single stripe that's on the tiger. I could if I wanted to. Right now, I just want to get the basics the outlines of them. Go over here to the second ear. Again, real carefully paying attention. There's a shadow area inside of his ear. It gets lighter as it goes out. So as I draw it, that's how I want my pen to do. I'm letting that pressure sensitivity of my pen pick up on the tapering. and giving myself an indication of the direction that it moves. Again, broken line on that upper ear. Sketchy, sketchy, broken line this bottom portion. The ear just kind of appears that way. Got an outer stripe along this edge, even going along his cheek, and that's indicated here. So let's add that in too. Ninety percent of drawing is just seeing, being able to understand what you're looking for. And then once you practice rendering it, it all comes, comes into play. Now that I've got that, let's make my brush a little bit smaller and let's taper it this be a little bit more more textured maybe I'll go in and start adding a few stripes so there's a larger stripe here again this is hard to do with smoothing turned up, so I'm going to bring my smoothing down. There we go. Now it's actually following every line work that I make. Less smooth gives me much, much more textured kind of control to it. And I'm trying to pay attention to the direction of the fur. It's going a little bit lateral there versus this. Go downward and around. There we go. There's this big guy going across his cheek. Actually, I think I got in this one a little bit too big. I'm going to swap over to my eraser tool. 
Let's erase away some of these. Nobody will know. Swap back to my brush and then we'll paint. furry edge on one side and it gets super dark and then making sure it gets furry on the other edge too. Okay. the top. Let's see another little spot that I indicated here. This one actually ties in with that spot. main there's darker areas down here so let's indicate that Now let's work on his forehead. Let's get those stripes, pull everything together. Actually, I'm going to go over to this cheek first. There's one underneath his eye. Again, choppy line. Should look like fur. It should look sketchy. this one that goes across the cheek. I went a bit too far with that. It's okay. Swap over to your eraser tool. <clears throat>
can see the top of the head, it's almost symmetrical. There's a few deviations. I'm trying to pay attention to that as it goes down his forehead and kind of spills over into the eyes. And I've indicated that here on my underdrawing. Whole purpose of the underdrawing is to remind you where everything is at. It doesn't have to be your only guideline. more of the line, and there's a few tufts of hair right here too, and then get the final ones that are on his eyes. Okay. Does kind of have a dimple right here in the middle, so maybe I'll just kind of indicate that. All right, backing out. Now that I've got all of my dark areas roughly sketched in, again, it doesn't have to be 100% right now, let's go in and add some white highlights to this area. Just like I've done with this one. I want it to look sketchy. I want it to look fur-ish. But uh, let's swap my color over to solid white. And then we can go back in and start to add some fur indications. Now I'm still working on the same outline layer. I'm just kind of working for the outline of the white within my design. If I, if I was to start painting on this, I could accidentally paint over my black area. And that's not necessarily what I want to do in some situations. In some of these, like if I'm looking up here at the ear, absolutely. Some of this white fur can overlap. I think the white's a little bit too stark. Maybe I'll pull it down to slightly off-white. Yeah. And just give me an indication of some fur that's coming off the ears that are up here. which is much easier to do in this layer. Later on, we're going to add another layer that's below this and add solid tones that won't interfere with any of these. But for now, just like I did with the blacks, black lines, let's go back and do the white 
lines too. Again, giving some just simple indication of where an edge would be and letting those overlap with the black. black fur. You can see how that white really does make it pop out. Another thing I'm concerned with is my midtones. I don't necessarily want to fill this in with just solid white. Just like I've done with the black, I want to have a good indication, but give yourself some gaps in between the white because those gaps indicate shadows. So as I'm drawing, I want to be conscious of where I place uh, where I place white gaps. So here's that edge. Again, now I can define the edge just by using the white of my pencil. Let's move over to this side. Not a lot I want to do around the eyes. The eyes are very important to keep all those small black details, so I'm not going to go in too much with white and cover that up. Let's see, I will hit it a little bit with a highlight. The same on that side too. A little bit of white indication on this side. Again, try to think about the direction of the fur cross-hatching of the white. But I don't want that to cover up the, uh, the black area that I have, so maybe I'm not going to get too close with that. A little bit of a highlight on her nose. A little bit of a white highlight. You can tell that the light's coming in on the left side here, so that's where we'll emphasize that. Again, let's go back around. So I'm looking at this. I'll zoom out my reference, see the whole thing. Whoops. white lines going on top of the black lines. That's what I want at this stage. And they're going off in this direction. Not going straight down. At least not in this part. I'm going off here. Light, light pin pressure on top of the blacks. Now let's do the right side of the face. Same way up at the ears. Just a few indications. Again, choppy line, broken line, but also the lines are going in the direction that the fur is, is growing. However she combed her fur that morning, that's the direction you want it to, uh, to go in. an area coming off of this. All of this is going straight down, so our line work can go down in that direction. This is why I like to draw animals. Animals are forgiving because of their fur, you can easily see the directional lines that it takes to draw it. Humans, not so much. If you're off by a centimeter on a person's portrait, you can tell. You can tell something's wrong. With an animal, you can be off by just a little bit. And unless you study those animals, Usually most people don't don't know. Don't say any, every animal is different. You 
Again, if you lose sight of the cursor, simply hit your caps lock key, and that will turn it into a little crosshair, and that crosshair is meant to be something easier to see. It gets rid of your brush outline, the shape of your brush, and turns it into a just a visual area that tells you exactly where the center is. I'm losing my I'm losing it a lot right now, so. Again, I don't want to do the entire area with white. I want to give my eye a little bit of this gray, <clears throat> excuse me, gray tones that I can use to pull in, make this look complete. So it shouldn't be just black and just white. G shades of gray are really nice to have too. Let's do some same thing on the little highlights here. So if it dips in, a little highlight on the nose. Again, very, very small brush, very, very light pressure gives me this kind of look and feel. On the nose. You're on the nose. And this is really my style of sketching. However you choose to sketch yours, yours may be a lot more cleaner lines, maybe a little bit more cartoonish, may even be more realistic than what I have. What I'm not looking for is 100% every single detail. For this project, I simply want you to get used to and accustomed to working in a drawing environment, a digital drawing environment. I mean, I'm not even looking at my reference. I'm just going to assume that's going off that way. All right, so with that done, <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is go to my Layers panel, and I'm going to make one more layer that's just below my Outline layer, and this will be my Tones layer. And my Caps Lock on for that one. We'll keep it there. I'm going to lock down my Outlines, choose my Tones, and inside of this layer, I can work in all the shades of gray. Again, going to my reference, this is where I want to pull down and start to really hit on some of the mid-tones that my, my grayscale just isn't picking up. So for instance, on the cheeks and over here, I think this can be a little bit lighter. So I'm lightening up. Now, because I'm working in a different layer, Everything that I painted on top of this layer is going to be untouched. And so I can really go to town with keeping up that texture. I can also go back, I'm going to pull this back up to my, my near white, and let's finish out the cheeks before I start doing those. So now I can go back in and paint all of this area in the cheeks without it being interrupted or disturbed. Let's do the same on the muzzle. So different layer, gives that different effect. Again, I'm still hatching, I'm still drawing this off so that it looks like it's fur. Bring down a different tone right here. That's better. A little bit too stark white. Remember, this is all in shadow, so we want to keep that not as 100% white, but pick up on more of a gray that's down here. Yeah, that looks better. Again, right there on his his mouth isn't white, it's actually a shade of gray. So we want to indicate that shade of gray. 
This is the part that I love, adding those tones in on top of the already dark areas is what makes your drawings pop, gives it depth and dimension. This whole cheek should be white. Well, I'm going to go ahead and paint it in underneath the other layer. And you can see I'm not using a pure white. I'm actually using a tone, tone of it. Go ahead and bring that up a little more. There we go. But because I'm using a tone, it looks white. My eye is blending in everything else. If I need to later on, I'll go back in and I'll add, add the white that it needs. All of this. Be added to there. Again, looking at the white on this mane, let's make it much, much lighter. Now it's really starting to pull together. Gets down here. Uh oh, a little artifact came up. Remember, you can always undo. Don't be afraid to undo as well. But just don't live by the undo. So I could fill all of this in with solid white, but actually for my sketch, I want to keep it, keep some of those mid-tones. I want to see the, the paper underneath, so to speak, the background that's underneath it. Again, hit a little whites behind the ears, make those pop out, whites up here. Boom, much better, much, much better. Let's get it around the eyes. That can go much wider. Same way for this side. So he's got some lights on his eyebrow area. Let's give him that. Now that I'm painting underneath, I can quickly paint it and add in that spot. All of this part goes very quickly. get the rest of his mane. Now he starts to look like a tiger. Again, I'm very careful not to fill in every single area with just white or just black. I want to give myself some grays. I want my eyes to do the blending. And I want, I want it to look artistic. Let's pull down another mid-tone value, I think up here in the forehead. Since most of the light, like I said, is on the right-hand side, maybe I'll indicate a little bit more highlights on this side help blend those in. I think that looks good with that one too, yeah. The muzzle is looking a little flat, so maybe we'll pull in some highlights here and some on this side too. And of course I know what I'm missing. I'm missing his whiskers. Let's go back. The last thing I'll add is 
Or maybe even that last thing. But I'm going to go back to my outline layer. Let's unlock it. I've got a solid white. Let's add some whiskers. Definitely not there. Um, and this is the kind of thing you play around with. Just a few, just to indicate where they are and the direction they're going. Same way on this side. You can mostly see them on the side here. If you make a mistake, simply Command Z and undo. I think that whisker is too big. Make my brush a little smaller. That's half the problem. And pay attention to the direction that they're growing in, too. Some thicker, some thinner. Oh, the eyes, the eyes. Hang on, let's go back to the layer, tones layer. With the tones, let's add back in some of those tones in the eyes. Those eyes were always so flat. Now I can go in and add a little bit of a highlight. Maybe not so much. Now we go. <clears throat> Got a little bit of a highlight down at the very bottom edge. We'll keep that mid-tone at the top and that will really give it the sense of depth. So now that my eyes have multiple tones in them, they start looking much, much more three-dimensional. They look like actual cat eyes now. And that's what we want. Zoom out, zoom out, double check everything. Maybe go back in, clean up some of the other things as well. All right, with this, now your sketch is nearing completion. Once you reach a stopping point, whenever you decide you want to stop, uh, if you want, go ahead and add your signature down at the bottom and save this up as a Photoshop file. I've already saved mine, but I'll show you again. We'll go up to File and Save As. Do make sure your name is added to the ending of it, and you've got Photoshop as the format. This will give me all of the layers that you've worked on. I want to be able to see your reference, your background, and any tones and outline sketches that you have as well. This Photoshop file is what you're going to upload to Moodle once you're finished. And if it is too large for Moodle, feel free to either email it to me or send me a link through Dropbox or your Google Mail account. We'll add a little bit more definition to the nose. All right, you guys have fun with this and I hope you all have a great day.